Excuse me. Uh, she was like, yo, I didn't, I never knew what Donique looked like. Um, and I was like, don't get any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Ancestrylands.com. Listen, man, we're back. Yo, I'm Delmonco. Better than ever. And again, you guys know who it is. I have a special guest, Don Coombs here. Yo, I'm Delmonco. Do you feel that in our environment today, convenience is something that we choose over really, you know, it's kind of like choosing the easy route or the hard route, you know, in, in a way. Or it's staying in your comfort zone and getting outside your comfort zone. You see all these videos talk about comfort zone, but I don't know if they're always talking about necessarily just the feeling of comfort as opposed to what that tangible means, tangibly means. What do you think? I think a word that we might want to interject into the conversation is agile. Mm. The ability to move in space. Mm. Uh, Hope you're listening, folks. If I just took uh, computer applications uh, as a, a template, think about all the advancements that are happening happening daily. Uh, every app is being uploaded with a new capability. There are uh, billions of apps that you can use. There are apps that haven't even been created yet. There, there, there's someone's intellectual capital at this point. Uh, you would have to be very agile in that sort of environment. When you think of all the things that actually help your phone work, satellites, engineers, programmers, uh, content creators, right? Because you like an app because there are content creators, right? Something to watch. There's a, a program available that might strike your interest. So you have to be agile. Uh, when we were in school, they told us you're going to need an education because when you get into the labor force, you're going to be required to have a degree. I think uh, a lot of people leave college and possibly find out that the degree that they hold is no longer holding their interests. Um, they are then struck with the idea of, well, you know what? I should go back to learn. Come on, let's register. And <clears throat> try to tailor my interests to my passions, right? Because I think the difference there is, well, how much money do I want to make? And then will I be happy making X amount of dollars, right? So <clears throat> in order to, I think, find the balance, you have to be agile because you can only deal with the situation that's in front of you, right? We had the old football rule, head up to outside. Those were, that's how you dealt with the threats. Right. Yeah. Ultimately, uh, the goal was to score. So we all had a contingency plan. If something went wrong, head up to outside. What did you do? A fail safe. And I think being agile in today's environment is the best thing that you can do. Because with the advance of the Internet, um, everyone's ideas now matter. Right. Everyone can bring their idea to the forefront and have it be brought to market. Right. Uh, resources are now becoming more readily available. There was a time if you were a music artist, you had to go through a company, get signed, it was uh, artist development, then there was touring. That was quite a bit. Now, a young entrepreneur talent can take their phone that their parent is paying for and create content in their room and create a career right so there's a real there's a real initiative there to be self-propelled so i guess distance can be uh short or long i think your desire for information uh plateaus and then grows I don't think you can actually stay stagnant in your thought because everything is changing around you. Uh, 
I grew up in the inner city of uh, New York City and <clears throat> a lot of uh, career days were uh, filled with uh, civil service jobs. And when you get out of college, you look at some of the uh, salaries, uh, you start to wonder if those jobs are for you. So you have to definitely make some decisions that are going to make you disciplined because no matter what job you pick in civil service, you're probably trying to earn a a, a pension of sorts. So that's going to take a measure of discipline. You're going to have to be a great employee for 20 years. You know, and there's a distance. Uh, so when you look at agility in a place like New York City, uh, you would want to have a more diverse career day, right? To help all the young minds understand all the possibilities that the city holds. So they would be more agile in their decision-making because when you're only presented with three or four options, you could assume that maybe those are the best four options or the only. So I think agility is the word that I would like to interject um, to accompany the measure of discipline. Write that down, write that down! Uh, one thing I'll, I'll, I'll give people a great example of this is um, I'll use the example of nurses and teachers. Uh, a school teacher can also teach in a classroom. They can teach privately, one-on-one -on -one lessons, um, you know, as a tutor. Uh, they don't they have one degree that allows them to do the same profession in multiple modalities. So just if you're like the college student, if you're choosing a career path, when we talk about, you know, the same discipline in, in that agility is being able to move from the classroom to you can now virtually teach. You can be a virtual teacher. Um, you can teach English as a second language. My brother's a teacher. So you, you want to be able to do something that you can switch the mode. Um, no more than you're switching a video game. If you're playing on a video game console, you want to be able to be, when he's talking about that agile, that agility, you want to be able to switch seamlessly. So if a career path or a roadway for you is blocked, you have the ability to not go all the way back to the beginning where you started to begin a new path. You, you literally can just shift into another lane and continue forward. That 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 is what he's explaining so much in about that agility and how that translates into things in life. From my own personal experience being a nurse, I've done home care, I've worked in hospitals, I've done flu shots, um, I've been a travel nurse. So again, this is off the same degree without the need of going back for further education. So that's a little example of agility. It doesn't mean you need to be those two professions, but you got to think, like Don is saying, in a little bit more of multi-steps and how you can switch because, I mean, we are, we're both family men. You don't have the time to go back and go through four years of, you know, day in and day out schooling. You want to think right. about that up front. Yeah, and the, uh, the old uh, cliche of hindsight is twenty twenty. And, <laughs> uh, Let me ask once you a question moving uh, forward. So can we, we, we are identifying things that one's mindset should have or things to keep in mind. What, what are, let's, let's talk the solutions now. What are things that, that people can say, okay, you know, discipline, you talked about going further in time. You talked about that. Give me some, give me something I can walk away with and put in my mind of how do I do this moving forward? What's the, what's the one plus one is two solution. And don't give me algebra, give me basic math. So the 18 year old mind, I think a lot of times we talk is 40, you know, 50 and 60 year olds, not that Don and I are that, that old, but we tend to talk from a very high level. How do we give the younger generation, our listeners that are talking in there, they're looking for what's my first step one? How do I get the first step one of discipline? How do I get the first step one of agility? Your thoughts, Don? The word that comes to mind, decision. Mm. The minute you make the decision, you are off on your journey. Mm. And although that seems uh, somewhat implied, right. the decision is the thought, is the electricity to the 
the journey. If you don't necessarily repeat that to yourself and loop it, uh, you may not have the steam to continue to go on because it's that message, it's that billboard in your mind of I can do it, I can do it. Uh, anywhere you go, you see these affirmations on the walls, whether it's in stadiums, uh, schools, uh, museums, these affirmations are, you know, attempts at accountability. If I see it, I'm going to do it. It's a reminder. So I, I would definitely say the decision to do something is, is, is number one. You have to be clear on that because back to the distance, if you see all the obstacles as too tall to traverse, then you're going to have to make another decision. So you have to see your decision as unfallible, you know, a real inner self-confidence as to what you can do and not listen to the murmurs of outside distractions. It, it literally has to be something you loop to yourself. And from a computer standpoint, it is a command. It is a line of code um, to your brain, your CPU. But yeah. I want to thank you for coming on. I want to thank you for, you know, emptying your mind of wisdom from bringing the sage advice uh, to our audience, to our listeners thank you, that humbly. are now international. And I hope people actually are going to take away from this, not just listen, take a moment and, and really reflect on what's being talked about here. You should always have a coffee cup in your hand and have uh, your iPod, AirPods or something in your ear listening to this to hear what's being said today, because these are things you can talk to your children about. All right, folks, well, Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, AncestryLands.com. Uh, we are going to have Mr. Don Coombs back. Don Coombs, thank you so much for joining us and Wow. It's a pleasure. I'm greatly honored. I'm going to say Ancestry Lands, folks, where you go to find property. Ancestry Lands on YouTube is where you find property, but you also yes. find knowledge. I'm going to leave it at this state. Go to Ancestry Lands to fill up your, uh, get your real estate, to buy property, get into ownership and build your power base. Um, go to Ancestry Lands on YouTube to do that and much more. I'm going to leave it with this statement. All right. I just heard this one and I think it's beautiful. If you think the price of success is too high, Wait till you get the bill for regret. It's <laughs> folks. On and out. Phil Davis, your Uncle Phil. Mr. Don's got you covered. Don, knocking him out with that knowledge, baby. Ancestry lands and we're out. Take Stay care. successful. Are you confused with today's real estate market? With high interest rates and overpriced housing, it can be hard to find something to own at the right price. Available on Amazon, Getting Dollars from Dirt by author Philip H. Davis is a game-changing book that invites you to embark on a thrilling exploration of this often overlooked asset class. This book is your roadmap to unlocking the secrets of vacant land investment. Inside these pages, you will uncover the transformative power of vacant land as a wealth-building tool. Discover how to spot promising properties, assess their true value, and capitalize on market trends. From understanding zoning and permits to leveraging financing strategies, you will gain the knowledge and confidence to make savvy investment decisions. With each page you turn, you will gain a deeper understanding of the profound impact your investments can have on the world around you. Getting dollars from dirt is not just a guidebook, it's a call to action. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a curious novice, this book will empower you to tap into the immense potential of vacant land and embark on a journey toward financial freedom and a brighter future.